Hey everyone, Nick Bruns here for iDoc Social. Dry eye disease is the most common reason why people seek eye care in the United States, with over 38 million people suffering. We're seeing an increased incidence, especially over the last 10 years, presumably due to lifestyle changes and our increased digital demand. Well, dry eye management has evolved just as much in those 10 years. Two great options that I want to talk about are Zydra and MyBulb. And exactly what is the difference? Well, in order to get to that, you got to look at dry eye disease from two different points of view. And dry eye disease is a quantity issue or or it's a quality issue. And what I mean by that, it's either aqueous deficiency or evaporative. And often our patients have some elements of both. When you really boil it down, it's an inflammatory process. It starts with the disruption of corneal epithelium, resulting in activation of resting T cells on the ocular surface. This ignites a cascade, leading to recruitment of more resting T cells on the conge, leading to a sort of snowball effect uh, and result in epithelial damage from inflammation. So it is an inflammatory disease when you boil it down, and that's why steroids work in short pulses, but we don't really want steroids you know, for long-term management, which brings us to Zydra. Zydra is 5% lithidograst. Its target is inflammation. It's not a steroid. It binds to the surface protein, inhibiting T-cell interaction, downgrading the inflammatory mediators. And so patients who we use Zydra on usually see relief in about two weeks, and it works fairly well. The second component to dry eye disease is tear film quality, which is greatly influenced by lid architecture the quality of the mybum. As we all know, the tear film has three layers, the topmost layer being the lipid layer, which is responsible for keeping the tear film stable on the ocular surface. If this layer is inadequate, we end up with early evaporation, which brings us to our second drop, mybo. Mybo is 100% perfluoral hexaloctane, PFHO. It's the first and only water and preservative-free drop that targets evaporation. It, like Zydra, is not an anti-inflammatory. It works by forming a thin monolayer on the tear film surface with an aerophilic and a lipophilic section. So MIBO stabilizes the tear film by acting kind of like a blanket and it keeps that tear film stable for up to six hours. It has a really low surface tension. So when you use it, it actually feels really silky smooth. It's got a really small drop. Each drop is about 11 microliters compared to a normal eye drop, which is closer to 30 to 50 microliters. And it really helps by just preserving the quality of the tear film. So how do you determine which route to take? Well, I like to focus on clinical signs and symptoms. If I have a tear breakup time that's closer to two or three seconds, well, MIBO is probably a really good option there. Now, conversely, if I have a patient with a really scant tear film, a lot of staining on the cornea centrally especially, I might lean more towards Zydra. In reality though, a lot of my patients are on both of these options because again, dry eye has two main components and tackling from both angles really is beneficial.